Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank very much uh, Casey over at Knives Fast. He loaned me this knife to review, and for that I'm very grateful because these are very hard to get. Um, now, having said that, uh, this is the 8020.5, and that's cool. Uh, this, of course, is the full-size 8020. Um, more my size knife, but also not one of my favorite knives ever to be released. Um, primarily because of how much they cost. Unfortunately, the 8020.5, which shares many features, as you can see, um, falls into the same category. The 8020.5 is Grivex, it is Aus 10, it is made in Taiwan, and it is $150.00. If you can find one, on the secondary market, this little knife, and it is small, was selling for $300 plus dollars, to which I can only say, y'all are completely out of your minds. Spending that kind of money on what is essentially a cold steel, Aus 10 Grivex, is insane. Now, let's put that aside, because I'm apparently very passionate about it. And talk about the knife itself. You get a pretty good knife. I actually like this better than the full size uh, 20 point, the full 8020 in a couple of areas. One of which is the fact that this is very light. Uh, you get the same excellent shark lock. That, of course, is not one of my complaints about the 8020. The shark lock is interesting and works very well, and it is no different here on the 20.5. Um, this is comfortable in hand, even though because it's very thin. It is a lightweight and very comfortable knife, whereas the 8020s are less so. Um, if this knife was $90 or $75, I would have three of them. But at $150, yeah, probably not. That's okay. If you like this knife, go get it. It's a great knife. It's just a little expensive for me. Let's talk about what you get for your $150, if you can get one. You get uh, two and three quarters inches of cutting on just three inches of Aus 10 steel. The grip area from behind that swell right there is three and a half inches. Um, so I'm a little pinched. Uh, you know, so interestingly enough, one of the things I like better about the 8020, of course, is the size in, in length. So I get my hand in there very comfortably. And my thumb comes forward and lands on the blade right where the jimping is. The 20.5 here, because it is smaller, it, it sort of... Well, anyway, the way that I have to hold it, my thumb ends up making contact with the shark lock. And if I squeeze, I can get blade movement. See that? So this knife is not really for me size-wise. I wish that the 8020s were as thin, because that's really excellent. Um, but, yeah, this is just not really a knife for me. Also, the pocket clip means you've got almost an inch of knife sticking out of your pocket. That's a Demco thing. 8010s are the same way, 8015s are the same way. He really likes not deep carry clips, which is sort of contrary to my preference. Now, on the full 8020, you can come forward very carefully and use this spot right here to come forward on the blade. On the 20.5, you could, but not when your fingers are as big as mine. It, it, in other words, it mirrors the look of the full 20, but it, it really, you're going to want to be super careful doing that. Now, this is his shark's foot blade, which I like quite a bit. Uh, I think it's very cool looking. Um, it is great for draw cuts. Not so great for stabby stuff, um, even, you know, push cuts, but it's really good for draw cuts, and it's good for working up close if that's what you're into. They have a very nice grind on them. Everything is knocked down. Nothing is sharp when it shouldn't be. Build quality on this knife is very good. The spacing, for instance, between the shark lock and the scales is very nice. It's well done. Um, there is milling on the steel liners on the inside, so to reduce weight just a little bit. And, of course, Grivex is pretty light to begin with, and, of course... God, that shark lock just makes for such a fun, fidgetable knife. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, this is almost a three-finger knife for me. I mean, it really is too small for me. But the uh, 
There's a lot of fun here. If you have smaller hands than I do and you really like the look of this thing, they will be available again eventually. I just think that there were some troubles with getting them to their dealers and some other stuff that went on that wasn't that cool. But that will eventually work itself out. So let's do the size comparisons. We've already done it up against the uh, full size 8020. Let's do it up against the, there's my bug out. Let's do it up against the bug out. Now the bug out is another small knife. You actually get more cutting on the bug out, but about the same amount of handle. And of course you get S30V steel on the bug out or better um, now, and you get, this is the uh, CF Elite scales, but you can get these in G10 and stuff now too. Uh, these knives are very competitive size-wise, although the AD 20.5 here is taller, as you can see. Um, yeah, they're very similar. Here it is against the full-size Presidio 2 from Benchmade, and of course it's just dwarfed, right? And here it is against another small knife. This is the uh, Rat Model 2. Now, the Rat 2 is too small for me because of the way they shape the handle. The AD 20.5 is closer. In other words, if I had to choose between these two knives for comfort in hand, I would pick the AD 20.5 because the Rat 2 is exceptionally uncomfortable for me to hold. I do not like this knife at all for use. However, I would pick the Bug Out over the 20.5 if I needed a small, lightweight knife. But that's just me. All right, so what's the overall length of this thing? We're coming in at seven and a quarter, basically, a little over. Uh, nice medium size, small knife for me, but medium size knife for most people. Excuse my arm. Let's go ahead and get some specs out of the way. All right, you get uh, 3.2 millimeters of uh, Aus 10. Oh, excuse me, it is Aus 10A. This very much has a lot in common with uh, cold steel knives. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at how thick the scales are. It's pretty thin. So 9.8 9 .9 millimeters, which is oh, about a little over a third of an inch, right? So it's a nice thin carry. If it had a deep carry pocket clip on it, uh, this would absolutely disappear in the pocket, but um, it doesn't because they wanted it to look like its big brother, which I think was a real missed opportunity. Now let's see how light it is, because it feels pretty light. Do, do, do. Come on, old scale, you can do it. Yeah, 3.6 ounces for a 3-inch blade. Not bad at all. It's not a uber lightweight knife. It's not the bug out obviously, but uh, it is probably a little stronger. I know the lock is a little more durable than the axis lock, if that's what you're into. So there are some features, particularly since it's a big slab of metal right here, that uh, give it a little more weight, um, but probably are worth it in the end because it is probably a slightly tougher knife than the bug out. So what's the final analysis? Well, like I said, if this knife was more reasonably priced, uh, I would have one just because I like the Shark Lock and I don't want to spend the money on a full 80-20. Um, but at 150 bucks, I'm gonna have to think about it for a really long time. Now, if you love the Shark Lock and you want a Demco and you don't want to get uh, 80 15 or an 80 10 from Cold Steel, grab one of these. You will enjoy it, if your hands are smaller than mine. Uh, it's a great knife in many ways. It's just not a knife for me. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. If you've got big hands, this is not the knife for you. Um, but if you have medium to small size hands and you're looking for a comfortable carry with decent materials from an excellent maker who designs cool knives, then the Demco 80 20.5 could be for you. And I hope you find one. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and shut this down. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.